everybody, it's Zach again at NewTutorial.com. I wanted to come in and make a video today. Last week we made a video uh, about cavemen, and I made that video and um, didn't get a whole lot of response, but I got a couple of responses asking about the whole caves and stalactites, and I told, already told you then I was going to make another video about it. And so I wanted to do that um, because I got this book right here. This is a Earth Science uh, book, um, California edition. So um, I got this online. I try to buy that, like I said in one of my other videos, I try to buy these whenever I can get them. I like textbooks. I like going through them line by line and seeing what all the lies are and uh, pulling them out and pulling attention to them. Because these things are filled with a lot of great, great science. But there's also a lot of horrible, horrible, evolutionary, fake, uh, just man-made garbage that's in here that just does has no place in science whatsoever. Uh, the evolutionary, the millions of years, evolutionary thinking, things like that, um, it just needs to go away. But there's a lot of good science in these books. And so what I have done is uh, I wanted to show you an example of one I brought up to you last week, which was right over here, I think. Yep, there it is right there. Now I'll bring this up to the camera. If you look at that, it's a picture of a cave. And it says, stalagmites grow upward from the floor of caves, and stalactites grow downward from the ceilings of caves. Both formations develop over millions of years in air-filled caves. Now, the one they're, picture, they're showing a picture of right here is uh, in water, uh, but uh, you, you know the, the, the point they're trying to make there. So, anyway, are, does it take millions of years uh, for stalactites and stalagmites uh, to form in caves? The answer is absolutely not, and I'm going to show it to you here today. And so that's why I'm making this video. And I found lots. I mean, the, the internet is full of examples of people who have found uh, the evidence to show that these things don't take millions of years to form. I'm just, I'm just going to show a three, a couple of the most uh, uh, great examples that I found uh, that I, I like to show. When I go, when I give my creation classes, I usually spend about 15 to 20 minutes just showing pictures, example after example, of uh, how easy it is for these stalactites and stalagmites to form. So the uh, first one here is uh, this one. Okay, this is this is a great one. This is unbelievable. This is like one of the greatest ones. This is one of the reasons I one of the way, This is one of the ones I always show. Excuse me, in all my classes. Um, this was started in 1903 by a guy in Wyoming. This guy he stuck a pipe into his hot mineral spring in his front yard that he had, and it flowed out over the top and over the sides. And here it is, a hundred years later. Now, I mean, this is great. This guy has a hot mineral spring, and these hot mineral springs are very well known for having lots and lots of mineral content in them. And so the guy sticks a pipe in it, and over it flows, and before long, the mineral content begins to stick on the pipe, and here it is 100 years later. Boom! This is exactly how stalactites and stalagmites form. It's because of the mineral content in the water uh, constantly uh, basically forms over top of one another, and there you go. The formations form. This is exactly one a one hundred percent replica of and uh, uh, and of real science. Something you can observe, test, and demonstrate of how these things form. Very simple, very easy, uh, and it's a great example. Awesome. So here's another one. Okay, so here's the George Rogers Clark Memorial in Indiana. Now this was built, I believe, in the 1960s. Um, back in the 1980s, somebody went down. You can tell by from the guy's socks, <laughs> probably from the 1980s. Look at the stalactite that had already formed uh, underneath uh, uh, this memorial. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And then on the pipes there above it as well, in the middle photo, uh, all the bunch of the, some of the pipes above it, uh, all these stalactites had formed, and, and the bottom below it, stalagmites. Um, so, unbelievable example, great example, another example of how you can build something and then just a few years later uh, you'll have uh, these formations, these rock formations from mineral deposits in the water. And it's just the same way it is in the caves. In fact, if you, if you look on the internet, you can find pictures of 
uh, the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., and there's been people who've gone down there and taken pictures underneath the Lincoln Memorial. It's the exact same thing. You have all kinds of formations that have formed in just a very short amount of time of when that Lincoln Memorial was built and what you see today, all kinds of formations. And like I said, there are just tons of these examples out on the Internet that you can find. It just totally blows away and proves that these things do not take millions of years to form. Now, when I grew up, I used to go to these uh, tours, these cave tours, and the cave tours would be like, oh, you know, the, uh, the first thing they tell you is don't touch the formations. They take millions of years to form. Well, n nowadays, and most of their websites uh, that I have found, they don't say that any longer. They say thousands of years because they know they've been proven wrong on that whole thing. Uh, uh, but, and, and most of the li their literature today, too, also says thousands of years. But uh, they, they, they no longer hold the story of millions of years because they know they've been called out on that too many times uh, to do that anymore. Uh, here's another really good example. This is one uh, in my hometown. This is the Missouri Botanical Gardens. I was on a tour here recently with my, some of my family uh, last year, I think, or year before, and I quickly snapped this photo with my, with my uh, camera phone. Now, this thing here, what you're looking at, is called the... Uh, it's called a biodome, and I believe um, there's a more. Oh, I'm sorry, it's called a climatron biodome. Climatron, I believe it's called a climatron. And what they do is basically they've created a rainforest inside of this building uh, called the climatron. And uh, so they have all this moving water in there. They have all these uh, you know lush trees that are the kind of trees you would find in a rainforest. And they have these big boulders that they've moved in, so like they have this kind of caveway you walk through. It's a really neat attraction. And you walk through it, and underneath this cave, I was walking through, and I noticed the stalactites starting to form underneath the rocks they had moved in for this display. Because, see, this building is only a few years old. Now, they just built this not too long ago. It's a pretty recent building. And so there's stalactites already forming under the waterfall that you walk under uh, through this uh, exhibit. And so I quickly put my phone out, and I snapped a few photos, and I've enhanced the boxes that you see there, enhanced the lighting, uh, so you can see the, 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 the small stalactites, and they, they had to have been about three to four inches long. Uh, I don't think they were getting quite to five inches yet, but definitely four, three to four inches long in some of those. Uh, so these were quickly, in just a number of years, a short amount of time since this climatron was built in the Missouri area uh, for the Missouri Botanical Gardens, uh, already three to four inch stalactites uh, coming down from the, from the bottom of the uh, top of these rocks. So anyway, there's just an example, another quick example of, and you can see these all over the place. Once you start to open your eyes to look for things like this, uh, I've seen them. Uh, I see, I've done a lot of hunting and trapping over the years, and I've seen, um, I've been under uh, uh, culverts and, and roadways and, and things like that, old bridges, and I've seen these under old bridges. I mean, you build a bridge and uh, enough water runs down to concrete or the rocks that are surrounding it, and you start to see these stalactites forming. Um, it's just part of nature. It doesn't take millions of years for these to form, or even many thousands of years. You can find really good formations in just a hundred years. You saw the guy from Wyoming, what he did, in just a hundred years. Depending on the mineral content in the water, it doesn't take very long at all for these to form. So no one can come in and say, oh, we know these took thousands of years to form, because number one, you don't know what the mineral content was on a consistent basis for all the time frame that you're acknowledging. Uh, it could have changed. Uh, absolutely, that could change. And so there's no way anyone can ever say, well, this took this many years to make and form, especially millions, because these things can form. We've proven uh, in, in a short amount of time. That's what real science is. Science is something that can be observed, tested, and demonstrated. Um, that's it. Simple. Observe, testable, and demonstrable. If you can observe, you can test and demonstrate it. It's science. If you can't, it's not. It's not you can't call it factual science. So uh, you can call it a theory, you can call it a hypothesis, that's about all you can call it, but you can't call it science fact that these things form over millions of years. And the, re the problem we're now encountering is going into uh, our, our dealing with our children and sending them off to these public schools and these universities, and if we don't give our kids a, a solid concrete foundation, they're going to get pummeled as soon as they get into these universities because these university professors are waiting for them and uh, knowing that these, these most of these kids who probably were raised in church or some churches were not given a good foundation 
of their Bible to stand on. Uh, yeah, you can teach a kid, it took millions of years to form, but if you put them in front of a, of a professor who is an authority figure in their life and he's telling them no and giving them reasons, supposed reasons, and supposed evidence of why they're wrong, why their Bible's wrong, they're going to crumble. So you can't just tell your kids this is what the Bible says and this and that's it. You have to give them evidence. You have to show them. You have to teach them their Bible. And if you don't, they're going to get eaten alive as soon as they get into college or in the upper uh, grades of high school. It's just not, and they're, and they're going to fall away from the faith. There's a great book that I have here. It's called Already Gone. And uh, it's put out by Ken Ham from Answers in Genesis. And uh, while I don't have 100% uh, agreement with everything with Ken, Ken Ham says, especially on his doctrine, uh, I, I said I'm a Torah observant believer. Um, but he, uh, he has a lot of good statistics and information when it comes to our young people being uh, tossed aside by our, our churches. It says, in fact, you have a, a more of a chance of, uh, of going away from your faith if you went to Sunday school when you were a kid. Why is that? That seems like it's impossible because our Sunday school teachers are not teaching our children what they need to be taught for a firm foundation. They're just not. Uh, you're, you're teaching our, our, our kids um, the Bible stories, the stories in the Bible like they're some kind of fairy tale, once upon a time, a prince and a princess type, type stories. No, these are, the Bible contains real facts, real stories of real events that occurred throughout human history. And we need to be teaching them in that prescribed uh, manner instead of like they're just some sort of fairy tales that we teach to our children. Uh, when's the last time you saw Noah's Ark? And it didn't have a bunch of giraffes and hippos and all these things sticking out out the front of it. I mean, you're teaching it like it's some sort of, you know, fantasy tale. No, there was really a Noah's Ark. He really did put th tens of thousands, uh, thousands or tens of thousands of animals on board and did feed them for a year on it. Uh, that's a fact. And it's easily proven. Maybe we'll go over that next time. Maybe we'll go over Noah's Ark next time and show you some of the evidence and facts uh, concerning that. Uh, but I wanted to get into the caves. Uh, there's so much great evidence in the caves that these things did not take millions of years to form. I live near Merrimack Caverns, one of the largest cave formations uh, in, in the country, and uh, they've changed their story on it because they know uh, they did not take millions of years to form. So anyway, uh, another, like I said, another good book called Already Gone, talking about the kids who are leaving our churches uh, in droves. Uh, basically, our churches today are being decimated, and I can tell you why. It's because we're building them on a Torah-less foundation. Get back to your Torah. You want to heal this land? You want to heal your families? Get back to the Torah. Turn from your wicked ways. Only th There's only one thing that, that tells us what is wicked and what is not, and that is the Torah. So, all right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Go home. Most importantly, read your Bible. Thanks.